So welcome back, Wide Fox Fanatics. This time, I'm just going to kind of update you on all the small stuff I've been doing. So now I'm steadily cranking away at the Wide Fox, trying to get it together. So last time you saw me do the passenger side fender with the strap on it to make it fit and everything. And then this time I'm just going to give you some updates on where I'm going with everything so that you can kind of see all the little things that you may not recognize later on if I don't show them to you. So here is the driver's side fender. Now I did the same thing on the passenger side as I did on the driver's side or vice versa, driver versus passenger. I ended up splitting it all the way down and I ended up measuring this to about 12 and a half inches. Same thing, it's literally from the edge of the cowl straight out. So think of it that way, 12 inches about the right at the edge of the cowl. I did put in two bolts from the cowl inside going out into the fender, measured the same, drilled them, tightened them, and they fit just about as well as the passenger side did. Not exactly perfect, but within a tolerance that I can sand and fit it to make it fit well. Going to windshield molding, again, probably about a mil and a half to two millimeters gap up down but definitely fixable with some kitty hair. I gotta fix this. And then the passenger side actually fits very well to the point where I, if you see there's no strap here, because I don't need it. Now one thing I did do different on the driver's side fender versus the passenger is I did not forget to put in this bracket that's behind here. So this side does have the bracket. And after I did it all and I put the bracket in prior to putting this on, I just used some of the same rib nuts, the quarter by 20 rib nuts that I put in for the rest of the wide body. And the bolts from the original fender actually fit. They're a quarter by 20, so yay, didn't have to do anything there just to bolt them on. Everything fits well, and this bracket, I will say, is needed. So I'll fix that on the passenger side where I didn't. And it's actually needed because it gives you a lot more stability to hold this fender in place versus letting it flex. So have to fix that later. So I think I mentioned this already that this radiator and obviously these hold downs are not going to fit under the hood. The radiator if I remember right actually fits or should sit level with this. So this is a B cool I think it's either a three core or four core I think it's maybe a three but it's a B cool brand radiator that I got out of the 92. What I'm going to do with this is just actually buy a cover that bolts here goes up and over and mounts the radiator. I had thought about doing my own where I was gonna uh, basically bend it all myself and do everything. And honestly, I, I think just trying to do it without a true break, with doing it with like two I-4s and hitting it with a hammer and everything else, I just don't think it's gonna turn out. So I'm just gonna spend the money and buy one of these. So I'm kind of looking for one of those, but I'll figure something out. And I may have to lower this on the Team Z piece because there's kind of a, an aluminum piece that holds it together that's actually pushing it up. So I'm going to have to modify something. I just don't know what yet, but i got to figure that out. So to come, this will have to be fixed. So now, if you remember back when I power washed all of the transmission and that, if you remember I had said that I thought there was a bolt broke off on the shifter itself where the shifter is bolted to there. So I took that off last night, took the shifter off, and what I realized was whoever had gone into the transmission, which I think somebody has either rebuilt it or done something with it, resealed it at least, they just forgot to put a bolt in. So thankfully that was a very easy fix. Just re-siliconed it down and then put in an extra bolt and the shifter is all in perfect, good. So if you look behind, there's no transmission because I've actually already put it in the car and I'm waiting on the cross member to go in. So the cross member itself, if you remember, this one is the one I kept from the 92 because it matches the V8, the double hump. The car is an 80, so those won't bolt together. The difference is in the ends. So the 92 or the later models, they're actually wider where they mount into the car. The earlier models, like 79, 80 and that, and I'm not sure what year changes, but it's actually thinner. So I ended up measuring the car last night and it's about 66 to 70 millimeters. Now, let me tell you this. I worked so long 
working in auto factories, Japanese auto factories, that I don't think in inches. So if you hear a lot of what I say is in millimeters, because that's where my mind works. I don't even know how to calculate three eighths and all that other stuff in inches. I literally think in millimeters in my life. I know, it's weird, but that's how it is. So everything I do is in millimeters. So the car itself, the 80 chassis, is somewhere in the 66 to 70 millimeters range. Now for those playing at home, it's in the two and three quarter range. Let's call it that. This was too wide to go in there. This was probably about three inches wide. So what you can do, if you ever need to do this, to take an older, let's just say this, a newer model, a later model in the Fox, and convert it to go into a early model car, what you'll do is take these bushings off. Now, these are just rubber bushings that fit in there. You will take them out and then go literally against this edge and cut them off. I did it with a hacksaw in about 20 minutes, but just take out the bushings and the center piece, the bolt structure itself, which is this, take out this bolt piece and you literally make it smaller. So you can see I cut the ears off. This used to be on there, just like that. And of course this other side, had another one too. So then once that was modified, both ends, the rubber itself is still in good shape, so I'm gonna reuse it. But what this did is I did not have to go buy an aftermarket one to put in a V8 into an early model chassis. This now will literally bolt up to that car. All I need to do is make these bolts shorter than longer to be able to fit. All right, so I had mentioned previously about the ECM not fitting under the dash with the HVAC box in place. So I was looking for a new home for it, and what I think I'm gonna do is put the ACM underneath the passenger side seat. Now I talked to some other people that have relocated their dash and either swap dashes or relocated the ECM in that, and they all said they went under the passenger seat. So what I'm gonna do is fabricate a plate, basically that will sit between the seat and the floor, it'll go over these two studs, it'll be then bent down underneath here, and it will sit flat, and then the ECM is simply just gonna bolt to it. That will keep it from kind of vibrating around as you drive the car, the seat will keep the plate in place because it's gonna be sandwiched in there, and then I'm just gonna bolt this down to the plate, and that way it'll sit above the carpet, it shouldn't get too hot, but then it won't be kicked either way because of the seat being moved forward or back. So with that, let me show you how I'm gonna build my ECM, let's call it a tray. Okay, so on this, what I'm primarily looking to do is I'm gonna take a, a piece of 12 by 12. This is 28 gauge steel, it's very flexible, and I think I can bend this here in the shop just using some simple tools, some clamps on a workbench, and then a piece of two by four, and just bend it over. It doesn't have to be perfect and crisp, so I think I can do it by hand. So if you look at the studs, what I, what I want to do is basically set the steel plate over, bend it to these contours, and then fit it right down in here in this channel. The studs themselves are about 10 and 3 quarter inch center to center, and then they're set back from this front edge about an inch and a half. Using a tape measure, I've confirmed that. Now from the edge to this edge here to the first bend is two and a half. So basically what I've done is I've marked on my plate, kind of hard to see with the reflection, but it's in gold and this has an oil sheeting on it. So the marker is not going to stay that well, but it's at least there so that I can use it. So what I'm going to do is draw two holes for the studs here and they're going to be about a half inch. So they're going to be oversized, but they're going to fit pretty well. I'll then go and bend this a little bit to start bending it down for this first piece. Then I'm going to come back, double check it again, make sure it fits. And then I'll bend the second piece, make sure it, uh, goes all the way down and then I'm gonna bend it again. So it's gonna be three bends The first will be down down and then out Basically that way and then two holes This will be close enough to put the ECM on and then I'll figure out how to bolt the ECM down
Okay, so here's the finished bracket now kind of sitting over the studs and it doesn't come all the way down to the floor and that's okay. So a 12 by 12 piece, knowing the ECM is about seven inches in width, you're gonna use five of this over here just to cover this piece. So now if, if I feel like this bounces too much or whatever, I can always do something different. I've got a bunch of different uh, foams and different else in here in the shop that I can put on the bottom side to help try to alleviate some of this bouncing. I'll probably just do it side to side, make sure it's evenly spaced, drill it, fasten it down, and then I can start bringing in the, uh, the wiring over on here on the side and come up and in. So at least I know where this is going to be, and now I can start to finish up the engine bay harness and get everything pulled back into the cab in the area in here, and then make sure the connector get down to the ECM now that it's found its place. Okay, so the last thing I'll show you guys that I've been working on has been the braking system in here in the engine bay. So I did buy a 9495 Cobra Master cylinder that's got the 15 16 inch bore. Now that will be a larger bore, it'll push more fluid, it will accommodate for the rear disc brakes and the calipers. So that is thankfully a bolt on other than you need to adjust for the length of the push rod. I did also buy some Maxim Motorsports conversion lines to be able to take this uh, master cylinder off the Fox booster and goes to the Fox lines. These things are pristine, literally just bolt them on, follow the instructions, and they are golden. So if you guys are going to do this, I highly recommend getting those conversion lines. They are worth every penny. So beyond that, I have the coil now. This is an older coil like Alpha 92. It's my old MSD, but it worked. Now the bracket itself has been in place, so I dusted that, put that in, and then now I just really need to get back to this darn wiring. I think that's really the next big challenge is to get this wiring in place and get that buttoned up so that I can start to finish up the mechanical pieces. So that's just a few of the things I've been working on lately. Now, I have picked out what wheels I'm going to put on Wide Fox. I've got them coming probably next week or two. So if you guys want to know what they are before, you're going to have to check out uh, either Snapchat or Instagram. And I still might not even tell you. I might leave it up for surprise for the end. So that's it for this time, guys. I am working steadily to get this thing done this year. In the next couple months, get this fired and out to some shows and get some looks from the public. That's it for this time. Basin Motorsports, out.